Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, I had a fun time this last Sunday. We had our monthly meeting of the Albuquerque Typewriter Society, and we had some uh, great people show up, and uh, I came away with a job to do. And that job involves this flowery case. And in this case was this wonderful Corona 4 typewriter. So one of the gals that's a member of our group, she was offered the opportunity to have this typewriter, but it was in extremely dirty, filthy condition. And uh, I spent the better part of yesterday, uh, Monday, working on this typewriter, actually uh, starting Sunday evening into Monday. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, just want to talk about a little bit what I did to clean it up and get it serviced and some other things. So stay tuned. <laughs> Well, I used to have a Corona 4 typewriter, but mine was in the more standard case where the typewriter sits on the base and then the top lid comes off. But this one was a little bit different of a case. It uh, The typewriter sits down inside of it like that. And there is a there's two little fittings on the back here for the back of the typewriter, one up front here. Some previous owner of this typewriter had, of course, covered this in adhesive shelf paper. And uh, so anyway, the case is still functional. The handle is kind of rotted looking a little bit, but uh, the main problem, of course, was the typewriter itself. It was really, really dirty. It hadn't been serviced in a long, long time, if ever. So the typewriter came with uh, two metal spools and one ribbon cover. The metal spools appeared to be the right kind for the Corona 4. The one on this side was just frozen on. It took me a lot of work to get it off. And the right ribbon drive system wasn't turning at all. And that turned out to be, it was so gunked up with old grease and grunge that it just wouldn't turn at all. So anyway, I did a lot of degreasing under there in order to uh, free these up and get them going. And I took the advice of Diane Mayer, who had visited us uh, a month or two ago, and she recommended a degreaser product that I got at one of the dollar stores. And it's called LA's Totally Awesome. It works really good, and what I did with it is I sprayed it on these uh, moving metal parts down in here on the underneath the ribbon drive, and then I took a stiff brush. I was using one of these stiff bristled hair colorist brush. Uh, those bristles are stiff enough that you can actually work the grime loose with this degreaser. And then I blew the stuff out with the residue out with the air compressor and then followed it up with uh, isopropyl alcohol, which I use in a little squeeze bottle, worked it through a little bit, used my brush on it, and then blew that out. And then any of the moving parts, parts that are pivoting and moving, I like to use the Tri-Flow uh, firearms lubricant and that that's what I use and that works really well so those three products is pretty much all I used on this typewriter so um, degreasing the ribbon drive on both of these fixed the ribbon problem completely um, you loosen two screws down here behind the top row of keys take off two more screws and this whole front panel pops loose on the paper scale in front of the platen uh, two screws removes the scale and then two more screws removes the metal bar that these uh, paper fingers rest on and you have to bend one of the little corners of this metal bar out of the way so you can slide off one of the paper fingers and then you can pull that whole bar out and that gives you a lot of access room to get underneath the, the platen and into the escaping area and I just followed up and did the same thing with the rest of it. I sprayed in this, uh, this degreaser product, worked it around, blew it out, followed it up with alcohol to remove all the moisture, and then hit it with some of my TriFlow whenever, wherever there was items that needed to be lubricated. And uh, the thing has uh, come along quite nicely. I was really surprised, actually. I used to have a Corona 4, as I said, and this one turns out to be now in probably nicer shape than the one that I had back then. The paint job was really, really dirty and grimy. And what I did with it is I used a product that is supposed to be verboten for use on typewriters, and that is water displacement formula 40. If you take a soft cloth, put a little bit of WD-40 in it, 
and you can kind of gently rub it into this paint it'll loosen up all the grime without damaging the finish and that's basically what I did over the entire outside of it I would work one little corner one little piece at a time and then wipe it up afterwards with a dry cloth and that really went a long way toward getting all the grime off of this and um, then I followed it up with some spray automotive wax afterwards so this typewriter is uh, the serial number database shows it as being 1930. It's actually November, December of 1930. And the prefix letter on the front of the serial number indicates that it is indeed the gold black trim model of the Corona 4. But it's also because of the year code being 1930, this typewriter has dual carriage release. That's right, a carriage release on both the right and the left side. And that's a cool feature because my older Corona 4 I had didn't have the second carriage release. It's really nice having that feature. And uh, now that it's been cleaned up and working really well, I'm surprised. This is a nice little typewriter. Now the platen, let me pop out the, uh, this paper I've been writing on. The platen is pretty hard. And I did a little bit of uh, sanding with some emery and some alcohol on it to smooth it out, but it is pretty, pretty hard. It's going to need a new platen, really, but I recommend typing on a backing sheet of paper, and it actually looks really good. It's a pretty good imprint. The machine actually came with this ribbon, and it was pretty wet and inky looking, So, and it, ca it came with one of the metal spools, so I just had uh, Kevin, my friend Kevin, gave me a a pair of these universal plastic spools that has the expandable center hub that fits right over these Smith Corona spindles and it works fine and I threaded it up in that so typewriter is working good yes indeed well so I'm fixing this up for one of the gals at our in our typewriter group and so she hasn't seen it yet but hopefully she'll be pleased with it and it was fun working on it and it came out better than I expected <laughs> So then at our typewriter gathering, we spent several hours after the meeting, meeting with one of our new members. So we got ourselves a new email server system for our group so we can uh, do group mailings a little bit more efficiently. And also we started a Facebook page, not a group, but just a Facebook page for our typewriter group here in Albuquerque that we hope will be a a way to we can share photos and maybe videos and at least post things upcoming for the for the group the group event so we're making a little bit of progress toward being a little bit more organized but I would like to give a shout out to Austin Typewriter Inc the, the wonderful group of people over in Texas who have really I think done a great job of marketing their typewriter group with a website, their Facebook presence, and a podcast, which I think is a great thing. I don't know if we're going to do a podcast. I would kind of like to actually. So that's something that may be in the future in the works. But so that was fun. It was a really productive day on Sunday. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, of course, is these two things right here. <music> And of course, these are the first two volumes in the Cold Hard Type series. Cold Hard Type Volume 1 is Paradigm Shifts, and Volume 2 is Escapement. And of course, it's a little self-serving because I happen to have one of my stories in the first book here. But I've been reading through uh, the first book. I'm just about three quarters done with the first one. And you know what? Every one of the stories in this book is amazing. N not counting my own. I'm just talking about everybody else's. Uh, Richard Polt and the other two editors did a great job of sifting through all the work and, and really it's a really strong body of short story literature and I really like the way it came out. Uh, really impressed actually. We have some really talented authors in the typosphere and I really am looking for vol forward to starting volume two. So a little bit slightly self-serving uh, thing but I really like this idea that we can crowdsource our typewriter culture and what it means to be a typist in the 21st century and potentially what typewriters might have to offer in unsettled uncertain times in the future. We don't know what the future holds of course, but these stories represent one possibility that uh, we might be going through some tough times and maybe typewriters might help us get through those 
tough times. Well, so I have a number of ultra portable typewriters, including three thermal typewriters. And all of these ultra portables, one of the benefits of them is that they are light and small enough that you can carry them around and use them as portable mobile writing devices. And of all the thermal typewriters, I have the EP43 Brother is the most recent one, but I didn't really have a good carrying bag for it. I was actually using kind of like an athletic little cinch top, flimsy little bag that didn't have any padding at all. I had to make a little bubble wrap pouch for the, for the thing to make it a little bit safe. But I went down to one of my favorite thrift stores today and uh, got this, yes, a Targus computer bag. It didn't come with a strap, but I, they had a selection of straps. And I got this blue strap, which I think is gonna work quite well with a black uh, case. So this particular Targus bag has these rubber bumpers on the inside. The main slot where the typewriter fits, uh, fits in, there's two rubber bumpers on either side and there's two on the bottom and they're kind of attached by velcro you could take them out but with all those bumpers in place it it's perfect a perfect fit for the ep43 and of course there are a number of pouches in these kinds of bags so one of the pouches has my little cardboard holder of thermal fax paper which is the probably least expensive way to deal uh, with working with thermal typewriters. And then the um, pouch on the back side has, of course, the Brother instruction manual. So it's nice now having a grab-and-go bag for every one of my uh, portable typewriters, and especially these thermal typewriters that really are the um, epitome of mobile typewriting. If you consider typewriting to be Keyboard to paper. The output is paper. I really kind of like, and I've covered this before in the past, but I really like the form factor of the EP43. It has the nicer keyboard like a Canon Type Star, but it has the more diminutive size of the Brother EP series. And so it's a nice, uh, I think, a compromise between size, feature set, and a nice keyboard. So, And also, it's powered by C-cell batteries, not D-cells, so the actual total weight is a little bit less than the uh, D-cell-powered Canon Type Star that I have. Well, this has been a short little update on what's going on in my life this week. Had a great meeting with our Albuquerque Typewriter Society, made some great progress in our social media communication getting a Facebook presence. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be a little more organized going into the future. And of course, working on this wonderful Corona 4 typewriter that came out really good and a grab and go bag for my thermal typewriter. Well guys, hang in there, stay creative. And until next time, you have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.